Hello everyone, Rare Mod Reviews here, and you guessed it, we have ourselves another mystery box. So, I'm not sure if you guys can tell from the size of this box compared to some of my other ones, but this is a big box, and <laughs> spoiler alert, there's only a few things in here. So we got some pretty uh, big kits in here. <laughs> and you're right, kits. Uh, no figures this time around, just straight up kits. Now, first up here, we have some flat top coat. I got this mainly because I have a lot of um, models that I have been putting decals and all that on and I want to ensure that those stay on so I went ahead and got myself some flat coat so as you see this is uh, Mr. Hobbies here I never used anything like this so this is going to be a new experience and it's actually is good for me because I haven't used any kind of paints like this before so it's good for me to finally get into you know some more well it's technically top coat not paint but Hey, uh, it's the gateway to paint, so I can do some um, better jobs painting my kits um, when need be. So, you guys kind of got a bit of a glimpse of what we have here, but I'm going to go ahead and take this guy on out, so you don't have to guess anymore. So, this kit here is going to be the Master Grey Marisai. So, this is actually a bit of an older kit, at least five years old or so. And, um, first of all, this is my first ever Titans. Um... Master Great. Oh, wow, this is actually like more than a decade old. I didn't think the Mario saw was that old. But regardless, uh, this is just one I've had my eyes on for a bit here. I'm actually a pretty big fan of the Titans mobile suits, and the Mario side has a special place in my heart. So I had to go ahead and get this guy here. So as you can see, even though it's kind of a big kit, it's got decent um, posability LEDs because uh, this is kind of when. Bet I start putting LEDs and everything. So since this is 2012. I want to say this wasn't too far off from the original um, Double O uh, line. So it has this looks like it has a unique little um, adapter there for the action base. So you could do a lot of the orbital drop poses, which this thing was prominently uh, known for, being used. Um, to descend in a job or at least stop the egg from doing it. And it's interesting this is Earth Federation because this was definitely a pi um, piloted by Titans. But moving on here, we're gonna go ahead and get inside the box. We have some nice gray plates here for the soles of the feet, some little inner workings, most like their hands and whatnot. I think I see some pilot figures there to the left by my thumb if you see that. Or maybe those are no 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 that's not parent figures, those are looks like fingers or something. We'll find out we build this in there. So this is a rare kit that has yellow beam sabers. So one Titan kit in particular that uses yellow beam sabers is the O. So that thing notoriously only comes with two beam sabers when it has four arms and four beam saber hilts. So those are those are pirate figures there. So if you need another kit that has yellow beam sabers, this is one to get. If you really wanna and that that four so again, we have more great parts here. Most of the here. And then we have the hands here. Look like this thing has the fixed, uh, yep, definitely the fixed position hand. Now, originally wasn't much of a fan of those, but after finally getting my hands on kits with uh, the fixed uh, fingers, I actually don't mind too much. Although lately I've been seeing Ben, I've been going back into using the 3.0 style hand, so we'll see. Speaking of Master Grey, I don't know what's been going on with Bandai lately. The Master Grey line, I don't know if the Master Grey line is a shadow of his former self or what, but Bandai does not make uh, as many Master Grey as they used to. They went from making like 10 or 12 a year to <laughs> 3 or 4, if any at all. Like I don't think they've announced a single Master Grey yet, and it's kind of like a little scary and alarming. Like the fact that we don't even have every Gundam like ever in Master Grey form yet is just like a Tall tale sign that something's not right at home. So I'm just gonna put these plates back in the box real quick. Look inside the menu. All right. And of course, we're also gonna move some of this stuff aside. Need some space here. All right. What I did the menu got kind of bundled up, but so that's so weird. That's the if I'm not mistaken. That's the Titans logo. So I don't know why it says Earth Federation everywhere. I mean, in the show, they really like to differentiate the Titans from the Federation, but. Yes, technically they are still part of the Federation. It's just the Titans hold themselves above them.
So I, I can't read uh, kanji here, so I don't know what the heck any of this is saying, but I imagine it's telling you how awesome the Maru Sai is and what was revolutionary about it, because to me it's nothing more than the, uh, the Dom and the Zaku combined, really. That's, the, that's one thing that always kind of made me laugh about the Titans, how they're supposed to be, you know, the anti zeon task force, and then they end up impressing space knowings and to add insult to injury, they started using basically a Xeon mobile suits. Like, these literally look like Xeon mobile suits. <laughs> like, so funny. But you have, of course, have a lineup of weapons there. Directions on how to properly cut parts from the runners. And, of course, this is a bit of a newer uh, kit, so they have everything properly planned out. Down from what's being built to what plates you need. So, you know, what are runners to grab to help. Save some space on your desk when you're building these things. So, of course, with this being a Xeon S suit, you have the notorious um, tubes that you put into the little slots here. And it's interesting that it appears to have you cut them out and put them in. As I am currently doing this aqua tube, I'm almost done with it. I should be able to finish it today or tomorrow, then get a review out for that thing soon. And uh, it didn't do this, it had all the tubes on one runner. You still had to cut the pieces out and then slide them down like a tube, but it was all kind of one connected rod. So overall, it wasn't too bad. I'm assuming I did this with the GUF 2.0. I built that GUF like almost 10 years ago, so I don't really remember to build, which is not a bad thing, so I made to build fresh again, but strange that they decided to do it that way. Although honestly, if I'm completely honest, the rod thing wasn't that much of a time. Um, I can't even find a word. It didn't save that much time. <laughs> so I don't blame them for just saying screw it and doing the old school with it. So, of course, this is here telling you that about when the uh, Marsai's first rolled out. It attacked the Gunner Mark II on the moon. Almost got him, but I believe Quattro bailed Camille out. And then, like I was saying before, this was used to stop the uh, AU from dropping on Jabiro. That failed. And they uh, also, I didn't mention this earlier, but this thing was compatible with the Bayou pack. This was the original Hyakushiki that came out like literally 20 years ago. And there's a Bayou version. And what was cool about that is you could use the value on all the kits here they have pictured. And then one thing about the high sec that's interesting is I don't believe they ever made a 2.0 of that kit. So I wonder if that's another gun cannon where that thing is an oldie but goldie. And speaking of oldie but goldies, you guys are going to love what I have um, else with this thing. I'm actually kicking myself because P Bandai had the value pack up for sale, but I ended up passing on it because I didn't know when I'd buy a, a kit that I even use it on, so I felt like, you know, it'd be kind of selfish of me to be holding on to something I'd never really be able to use, and might not even build. And sure enough, I ended up impulse buying the Mara side for who knows what reason, I don't know what made me get it. I guess I kind of really wanted it for a while now, so I, they had a sale on the, the USA Gunham store, so I kind of had to jump on it. Now, I don't have any LEDs lying around. If I do, the batteries on it are dead. And so are my extra batteries, so I don't know if it'll just show off the LED gimmicks on this or anything else, but yeah, I'll at least talk about when I get on them to review this thing. And again, me building a Zaku 2, this is like basically exactly like how to show the armor when that thing is built, so this is so funny. And one thing that always kind of like gets me is how many kits they could repurpose and do like other. Uh, suits with like a lot of these frames and stuff and yet they don't like it's so weird like again a high set I don't believe they ever made a 2.0 they could have used a Zaku 2's um, frame and made a 2.0 high set even if it was like a paid Bandai exclusive I mean there's always room for them to do it now but again it's just so strange when they don't do stuff like that and this is interesting I wonder if this thing has optional hands does this look more like uh, the I guess you call them the 2.0 hands where they sort of had movement to them, but from what I've seen, it looked like this thing had the bracket hand, so I wonder if there's two options set to hand you could use for this thing. But again, I guess we'll find out later. It looks like this will have a gimmick that lets you move with the mono eye. There's a, another piece there for the, um, the mount is new action base, of course. And it's showing you how to put the weapons in and all that. And there's that piece that's turned there before. It lets this thing do those nice rocking poses, simulate it falling into the atmosphere. And this is them showing you the extra pieces you'll need to, again, make sure the value works with this thing. I am really so mad at myself for not getting that value now. Something told me to get it anyway, but I didn't listen to myself. 
Oh well, maybe if I'm lucky, I'll come back or sell the kit. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of stuff on P Band that isn't P from what I thought they would, so I'll be sure to not pass it this time. So later I'm gonna put this guy back in a box. And then we are going to open the final kit I have in here. And yeah. <laughs> now this is funny. Now Again, I was telling you guys how the Mara size, basically the Dom and the Zaku combined. Check out the size of these boxes. Just look at the difference of these boxes. These kids are both around the same size, but look at that difference. This thing is almost twice as thick. It's about the same length though. Yeah, this is the same length, but the width or height, whatever you say, it's just, it's just laughable. Like, why is this thing so much bigger than the Mara size? Now, of course, we're going to go ahead and take a good look at this thing. Amazing box art. Now, this is, I wouldn't call it a holy grail, but something I'm definitely glad I got my hands on. Now, of course, I think it's safe to say everybody's a big fan of the original series. So, uh, My favorite uh, Xeon pilots, hands down, had to be the Black Tri-Stars. I just love the fact that not only were they a team, but, you know, the coordinated attacks. And at least with the uh, English dub, they made them like into the country bumpkins. So I just really love the Black Tri-Star, so I had to go ahead and get my hands on this. Now there's two versions of this kit. Oh, what the heck is the eco plot? I never heard of that. I guess it's trying to say it's using some sort of environmental friendly... Oh no, it's actually saying here, I don't know why my camera won't focus, but I don't, hang on. You guys might not know what eco plot is too, so. Waste paper pulp has been used to make this package. I don't know what that is, but okay, cool. Good to know my uh, boxes here are green. But yeah, <laughs> there's two versions of this kit. There is this version, the normal Rick, um, sorry, the normal Dom, and then there's the Rick Dom, which is the space type version. So I opted to get the Dom, the normal version here, literally because um, this thing had like extra weapons and whatnot, whereas the Rick Dom just had a giant bazooka and then the um, bean bazooka, which is something they never used in a show. That was kind of something they did afterwards because I never knew a Dom to have a bean bazooka. So I'm of course just showing you guys all some of this little extra stuff on the side here. I'm not gonna read it to you guys, but you could kind of pause it and, and say, I say, see. So one thing of course is an explaining here is that uh. There are some new parts that's been used to improve upon the uh, kit, but this thing, and the reason why it's been referred to as a 1.5, not 2.0, because the original version came out, I think it was the early 2000s, that, um, apparently that version of the DOM was that good that, again, they didn't need to make a 2.0, they just made a 1.5, and basically all this does is improve a bit on the leg articulation and a bit of the arm articulation. And it also uses some um, parts from the P-Banda releases of the Dwatch, and I think it's a Dwatch Custom. So as I expected, the reason why this box is so big is mainly because this thing uses a lot of huge parts, and wow, the light is really shining on it. It's kind of hard to get a good look at this thing, but there's a bunch of big purple uh, and black parts there, some big red parts, like a lot of these parts here. Straight out of the gate, just when you open this box, it's just big parts. It's not because this thing is huge, it's not like, this isn't a mobile armor, it's a it's normal size mobile suit, it's a bit thicker than the average uh, here. And it's just, a lot of these are just a lot of big parts. So, I doubt this is gonna be a complicated build or anything, it's just, again, the fact that this thing is so, uh, the parts are so big. So it's just standard degrees. And did I put the brightness of the on so much shine? Barely make out these parts so shine. And this is a surprise. This looks like this is these are, are water slide decals. Now I had some of these for my Dozo Zaku uh, too, but that's a P Bandai kiss. These are the P Bandai kiss to do water slides. They kind of stopped doing water slides on standard releases a while ago. So I make wonder if this is maybe going to be a P Bandai kit. And they say, hey, hold on, we only put out like one Master Raider this year. We have to make it some normal release. So this is like parts for the machine gun. And like I said earlier, a lot of these parts are going to be the same from the original release. As I say, slightly modified it with like handles. So you could use the pressing hands. 
Uh, they use more modern plastic, so you don't have that um, old style plastic. You find on kits like the Unit One and Full Veneer, which again I, I reviewed, and I do not recommend. So leave those things alone. Cross your fingers, Ben Da Vinci makes a 2.0 because those things are really good. So we have the little yellow effect for the heat stick. I wish this was more of a beam effect. I think it'd make it look a little more high quality, but it is a heat, I'm sorry, heat saver, I call it heat stick. Uh, so I guess they kind of use plastic to kind of differentiate it from an actual beam saver. So again, let's just look at this. A lot of these are just big parts, and holy crap, that bazooka is huge. <laughs> I think that's the um, one with the shield on it. I don't know what that one's called. I don't think that's a giant bazooka. Yeah, this has got to be the one for the shield one because there's a part for it there. But if I'm not mistaken, um, this thing uses the same bazooka from the Zaku 2.0. So I wonder if that'll have a weird gimmick that the 2.0 Zaku had where you could choose to make either the giant bazooka for the Dom or the uh, Zaku bazooka. So that was really weird that they did it like that. Makes me wonder if they're going to be a Dom sooner, but they didn't for some reason. I want to say, um, I was watching some of the videos that said they probably could have done a 2.0 from the ghost spring. But I don't think the ghost is quite as thick. The legs sort of are on a um, gel glue, not the ghost, but the gel glue. But yeah. So getting going in here, and I spent way more time than I thought I would with the uh, <laughs> Mahara side. So I mean, this thing is mentioning Zimmons Company. So I believe they're the ones who made the Dom. So I'm going to assume this is a, it's talking about that. And of course, talk about the Black Tristar. So again, I'm just going to kind of skim over this, give you guys opportunity to kind of pause it and look if you're curious about all this stuff. So of course, we have a Goof test prototype. The Goof, I believe, was the one that kind of had the big legs and a little hover uh, leg thing. So that kind of led to, of course, the prototype Dom here. And then they ended up going with the Dom. We have the Rip Dom there, of course, the Dwarf. Again, two suits I've mentioned. And they all ironically use this technology that makes the original Dom. So that's kind of funny there. It's like a chicken and the egg. So this is going to be all the accessories. It comes with the Sturm Falls. The uh, Rakuten Bazooka, that's what that thing's called. I wonder what Rakuten means. The machine gun, I love uh, the fact that they have a little machine gun for the dog, because let's be honest, this thing flying around a bazooka is kind of overkill. So that's one interesting thing this kit does. It breaks back the 3.0 hands. So that's something I thought they kind of stopped because um, if you guys see my review of the uh, Origins Gundam, that thing, it had um, the 3.0 hands, and they were cool and all, but the pinkies especially came off so easy. It was such a pain. Look at all the amount of plates you use for the chest and head. Yikes. Um, but I'm, I'm going to assume they they fixed the problem because this um, is one of them, I think, two kits that I'm seeing are using the 3.0 hands again. So I'm assuming that they, just, they decide to give them another go. They can maybe stop doing the bracket hands. And uh, go back to three porno hands. Because for your, for those of you who don't know, the first kit to ever use the bracket heads was the Goof Custom. Uh, people didn't like them. I think mostly because they were ugly. Because I have the Goof, Goof Custom. I reviewed it and everything, and I didn't mind the bracket hands on that one. They fit in different than the ones we see now. But again, it was I had no problem with them. And I honestly would argue that they help keep. Uh, Accessories in a lot more stably than the uh, 2.0 hands and the world well, original hands you'd see in kits with the pegs. They allowed articulation and all that, but again, they're kind of finicky. I also want to say all the black tri stars are kind of big guys, so it's so funny they use the little standard pilot and just pin them the black tri star colors. So, this, of course, is them telling you to detail this kit to look a lot better, and I agree. Brings out the little thrust that are better. Um, Showing some of the air frame the legs there, chest and arms and all that. Showing off that you could put some of the stuff to the side, move that model eye, all that. Showing off the accessories. It's of course gonna tell you a little info about them. I don't know what it is with my freaking uh, phone here. Every time I freaking tap the screen, it gets everything all fuzzy and blurry and so annoying. So I try to Make this thing focus. I'm guessing tapping the screen is not it because it just ruins the quality for some reason you tap it. But uh, moving on, just um, the amount of plates you need for each of these parts is so ridiculous. Like, what the heck? That is almost 10 plates just for the legs. And again, most of this is just them reusing old plates from a bunch of different kits. So that's why you end up using like 10 of them and 
if this was like one more consistent uh, kit, you wouldn't need any of those. Like, I'm not sure if you guys caught when I skimmed through the beginning of the manual, but there was a lot of X's on a lot of those plates. So this tells me most of the stuff you won't even really need. So it'll just be leftover pus or whatever. So this is another thing. Again, this is a 1.5. So they, they didn't change that much from all the Frankenstein kits they made to make this thing. As you can see right here, this doesn't even have an, its own custom adapter piece. You gotta use the one size fits all piece from the action base to even get this thing in here. But I'm not gonna personally complain about it as long as it helps pull off all the poses you want for the Dom. It's not gonna be a big deal. Plus, um, let's be honest, these things mostly were kind of um, hovering above the ground. So you wouldn't really need to um, do anything too extra. And as I thought, yeah, this thing, Definitely does use that same, um, what, what was the word I was gonna say? It uses that same bazooka from the, the Zaku 2 because I seen a little middle piece. That's how the Zaku 2's bazooka worked. You had the choice of either the bazooka, the Zaku 2 bazooka, the giant bazooka. So you kind of had to parts form it if you wanted to use different, uh, what was I about to say? Uh, bazookas. It didn't come with actually two bazookas you could use. You had to choose between which one. But yeah, my camera is acting crazy and this unboxing went way longer than I planned. So again, I thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Rare Modern Reviews. And I'm going to leave this off saying what I usually do for all, all my unboxings. If you guys wanted to see any of these kits reviewed ASAP, let me know in the comments. So if you were, let's say, looking at the Mara side for a while, you needed me to review it to get an opinion on whether you should get it, let me know, and I'll move this thing up the list, build it, and review it. Or, again, if you just uh, were curious about that, you just want to see a review or what have you, again, Dom's right here, Mara side, say set in the comments, and I'll get right on to it. I currently, again, as I said before, I'm building this level too. I'm almost done. I'll have that done soon. And then I have someone who requested the real great Strike Freedom. I have uh, it's a P Bandai version of it where it's in an alternate color scheme showing like it's deactivated. Like it doesn't have the face shift armor on. So it's like that gray color. So I'm going to be building that after a review that, of course, too. So again, if you have any requests for these two, let me know. And then I'll put that thing in a queue and I'll get that thing built straight away. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next review.